Hello, I am the mortal vessel otherwise occupied by Jarvis Hammer, drag king, comedian, loser of the Boulay Brothers Dracula season five. And today we're going to be doing a makeup look inspired by one of my favorite horror films and my favorite hammer horror of all time, gotta do right by my name, it's Dracula AD 1972. Or rather, a poster of Dracula AD 1972, specifically this one. So this poster is part of the reason why I chose 1973 as Jarvis's death year in my lore, which if you're not familiar, Jarvis Hammer is the ghost of a has-been actor who died in a freak accident on set one day when a spotlight fell and crushed him to death in London, 1973. 1973 was a good year for many reasons. It was the same year as the Fashion Battle of Versailles, where French fashion designers were pitted against Americans in Versailles itself, including competitors like Stephen Burroughs and Halston. Halston, who is also a major inspiration on my transatlantic affect that I use when in character as Jarvis and just as a character and a self-made man Halston intrigues me endlessly. 1973 same year my favorite Roxy Music album came out for your pleasure and this goofy little Belgian release of Dracula 80 1972 which must have been dubbed Dracula 73 judging by this poster. The film itself is my favorite hammer because it's got everything. It's got psychedelics, it's got groovy parties, ascots, geriatric fight sequences. It's a Latter-day Hammer where they're basically making fun of themselves and Christopher Lee and Peter Cushing are quite long in the tooth, but they're still giving it all they've got. And so we begin, or rather, I've already begun by washing out my face with Mehron's Clown White Cream. Here you see me beginning the underpainting process using a wet and wild black crayon to block out the main color areas of the face so that I know what's going on. If there are any mistakes, I can easily erase them because it's all creams and it's all smudgeable. And then I will set with powder and then I will go in with water-based paints and shadows to get that more painterly look. All in all, this look took me about two, two and a half hours and it's gonna be voiceover and time-lapse from here on out because I needed every ounce of concentration to recreate the brush strokes of this original painting. So I've wanted to do a recreation of this painting for a long time. I've had it in my office for almost four years now and I don't know the artist's name. There is a signature on it, but if anybody knows, drop it in the comments. I've not been able to find this person. The poster itself is also written in both French and Flemish because this was for the Belgian release of the film. And I lived in Brussels for three years as a kid, so this poster is very special to me. Underpainting is a technique that I think originated in oil painting can be used in really any kind of painting and it's often done in grayscale so that you can determine the color values that you're gonna lay on top later. You will see me using some other colors in a minute. I'm just using this black pencil as a map for the shadows of the face. You're also gonna see me pulling a lot of weird creepy faces. That is because I am trying to imitate the angle of Christopher Lee's face in the painting so that I can get the illusory light source correctly in the way that I'm laying down shadow and color and light. And here's a little sneak peek of a mistake I made before I started, which was to start painting my neck black with water-based paint for the illusion that I'm going to photograph later. Don't do that when you're painting with white cream paint on top, it's just all gonna go gray. And now I'm going in with Mehron's Pro Pencil Slim in red to block out the red areas of the face. This color is not quite right for matching the painting perfectly. It's too blue of a red, but that's okay because this is just the underpainting and I'm gonna go back over with the right tone of red later in water-based format. Right about now, I'm getting tired of working with the thin pencil and I wanna get in there with a craft brush and lay on more color. So I'm gonna pull out Ben Nye's Cream Stick in Fire Red shown next to the red from their Studio Color Carnival Cream Palette. Uh, which was more crimson in person, but shows up the same on camera. 
Oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. Here, for some reason, the exposure randomly kept blowing out on my camera. I think this was because I was filming in daytime, and although I had covered my windows with black velvet, there was some light leak through, and I believe that's what's causing this. I do apologize. I'm trying to get better at this whole professional camera work for YouTube stuff. But really, I'm just filming on my iPad. And I don't know what I'm doing. There's the creepy face. I love this part of the painting, especially the red under light of the nose. That's part of the light source illusion that we're trying to create here. Cracking that Ben Nye bad boy open again to the color yellow to lay down those areas of the face using what would normally be used for a eyeshadow pack on kind of situation. But I like the fact that it has different bristles of different lengths so it gives me a bit of a stippled effect. I'm feeling like that's replicating the brush stroke-esque aspect of the painting a bit more. Still in the cream phase, so we can erase the sins of our fathers, if only in real life. And there is the final underpainting. Now going in with Creature Cosmetics, oh the horror palette which they so graciously gifted me using the color Wolf to intensify some of that yellow. But before I could allow myself to play with these colored shadows, I had to set my face with RCMA's No Color Powder. I did that off camera. Shh. That is my colorless powder of choice. And I would say, oh, the horror by Creature Cosmetics is my rainbow palette of choice. But oh, look, what now? We have another contender. It is Ben Nye's Studio Color Rainbow Palette. And I am dipping into Caribbean and Bahama Blue to get that under cheek teal shadow that Christopher Lee has going on in the painting. Both of these rainbow palettes, however, cohabitate peacefully in my makeup kit because Oh The Horror offers more tones, whereas Ben Nye's is more straight up hues. Speaking of tones, Menagerie Cosmetics, they do them really well. I'm mixing cetacean and breaching here to get this nice 30% uh, gray kind of blue for the shadows around the eyes and chin. Time for water-based paints. I'm going in with Wolf FX's red and orange to get that really blood orangey color that you see in the painting. And this is the final step, or rather the final medium of paint or pigment that I'm using in this look.
Long time no talk. Do you still feel the same? I know I do about NYX's Epic Ink Liner, which I have been using for years and years for its ultra fine brush point tip. Basically, I am outlining the areas that I will later fill in with black water activated paint. I experimented with varying degrees of dry brushing to get the paint stroke-like aspect that I was looking to imitate from the original painting. Alternating between using the very tip of the brush where I had the least pigment and the flat back side of it which had the most caked up water paint on it. Oh, and my black water activated paint of choice is Mehron's Paradise AQ.
For final shadow details, I took a really razor sharp eyebrow brush and mixed a yellow and a black shadow together to get the sort of outer rim of the yellow highlight midlight. I don't know what we want to call it that was on top of his face. Oop, I put in a little orange there and I did not like that. So there I was trying to erase it. Even the under light red area of the nose had its own sort of shadow rim. And we're in the final stretch where I lost about 20 to 30 minutes of footage because I was filming on my iPad and ran out of storage in the middle of the shot, had no idea. But here's the final look. What you think? Does it work from all angles? I made my teeth out of Instamorph plastic and did a really rough job of blacking out my neck. I'm gonna handle that in post. The idea is to make it look like my face is emerging from shadow, just like in the painting. I glued on the teeth, which I made out of Instamorph plastic myself with Corega, which was gifted to me by Orgotic. And to finish out the video, unfortunately, I've had to switch to selfie cam because my iPad ran out of battery, can relate. Anyway, here's the final look. Let's see, let me do the pose, but it's, it's like. There we go. <laughs> Thanks for watching. Thank you for bearing with all of my technical difficulties. I am new to this YouTube thing and I'm trying to make a real go at it this year, this 2024. I really want to post on a regular schedule and so why not Sunday? It's the scariest day of all and I posted today so let's go for it. Let's reclaim the Sunday scaries and hopefully I'll give you something to look forward to. These makeup tutorials are the easiest thing to film so there will be a lot of this but also I've got gigs and photo shoots coming up that I've got to make new costumes for and I'd like to take you more behind the scenes of my sewing and fabrication process in part because when I was starting out as a drag king I didn't have that. Uh, there's not a lot of content out there about how to make masculine clothing for an AFAB body or assigned female at birth. Goodbye, flesh bags. Ooh.